You're ready to set up a column corner in your classroom, but what are you going to put in it? This special area in your classroom is meant to help your students self-regulate. But what happens when you put a whole bunch of really fun sensory items in there? What do you think your students will do? So when you first set up your column corner, you're probably really excited to get all these fun sensory items, you know, stress balls, kinetic sand, um, water, um, you know what I'm talking about, like water uh, bottles that have like glitter glue in it, um, you know, basically anything that'll make your students go, ooh, right? You know what I mean. But what happens when your students just go in there and just play with the items? Is that what your column corner is meant for? Now, don't get me wrong, sensory items are really important for your students who need them. But in a calm corner, they should be used as a tool instead of just the main focus of that area. So let's take a step back from making your calm corner a focus with only sensory items. Instead, let's add a goal to it. What should this area be used for? My name is Rachel Hull. I'm a former first grade teacher and I had a lot of success with uh, social emotional learning in my classroom. Um, usually my classroom is pretty anxiety free and calm and I really do attribute that to my calm corner. Um, I just really learned how to make it a functional area in my room and that really helped with the atmosphere of my classroom. And that's because my column corner had a specific goal. Your column corner should do two things. The first thing is provide a safe and private area for your students to go who just need to self-regulate. They need to, they have, are having some big feelings and they just need an area where they can just kind of bring the level down a little bit. And the second and most important part is that they need to be able to return to the class as soon as possible. So they need to go to that area, really process through their emotions, use some calming strategies, and then when they're ready, come back to you know, be able to learn with you. In my last video, we talked about the importance of having a calm corner. So if you're on the fence, whether or not this is something that you want to do, go watch that video. But in this video, we're going to talk about the things that you add to your calm corner that are going to help your students self-regulate and then be able to return to your class. And then if you stick around to the end, I'm going to have these, uh, I'm going to tell you how you can get these things at a discount. So stay tuned till the end. So here are the things that I have in my calm corner that would help my students process through their emotions and so they could return to their desks with us as soon as possible. Children have really complex emotions, but they really kind of only understand happy, sad, mad, you know, kind of the basic ones. So other emotions like frustrated, disappointed, nervous are not going to be as easy for them to understand. And that's why it's really important for your students to identify what those complicated emotions are. So in your calm corner, you're going to want to have some kind of emotions poster. And these are really great too. They just, they have the child's face showing and the body language showing each emotion. So there's nervous. Um, here's another one, grumpy. You know, they know they're, you know, they're, they don't know why, but they're, they're grumpy, but they don't understand what grumpy is. And so this would be a really good poster to put there and they'd be like, maybe I'm feeling a little grumpy right now. What should I do? If you don't have a lot of room in your classroom, I know I always had a really small uh, classroom area, so my wall space was kind of at a premium. And so you can use the smaller version of the posters on cards and add a little key ring to them. And that way your students just can flip through which emotion they're feeling and then they can, um, you know, kind of uh, go through the same motions, identify what they're feeling and then um, have a calming strategy to kind of feel better about it. So this one's confused. You know, maybe they're, um, you know, they're really struggling on their work and they just need a break because they're confused. And so this will help them understand that it's okay to be confused and then, um, you know, process through that, maybe take a couple deep breaths and we'll talk about calming strategies here in a minute and then be able to return to their desk and give it another try. And these are great because your students can flip through them. Um, you know, here's angry and um, either maybe hang them on a command hook. Command hooks are great. I use them all the time, but just hang it on a command hook on in your calm corner or they're portable. So you can have them return to their desks with them. If you have several sets of these, um, you could just print out a couple sets and put them on key rings. And that way, you know, your students who might need a little extra help can then carry these back to their desks and maybe just set them there while they're working. I kept both posters and cards at my calm corner. Some liked the posters and some liked the cards, and so I kept both. 
Once your students are able to identify their emotions, know how they're feeling, now it's time to introduce some calming strategies. And it, ideally you would do this during, you know, maybe if you have set aside um, social emotional learning time or morning meeting time, just introduce one a day and practice it with your class, you know, really go over what your expectations are for this. But that way your students will know what calming strategies to try. So for example, if a student is feeling um, nervous about a test or something, maybe some deep breathing activities can happen. So these are posters which are great. It shows the uh, technique of calming down and then it also tells you what they're doing. So they can kind of look at this and say, okay, you know, maybe I'll try to breathe. And there are several, you always want to give your students lots of different choices. Um, here's counting. You know, I always lost count because I, <laughs> if I ever tried counting as a strategy, I, I lost count. But then maybe that worked because I got distracted and that's fine. But some kids like to count to 10. Um, here's one, hug a stuffed animal. And so it's really simple for them to understand that this is something they can try to help them process through how they're feeling. And just like the emotions poster, you can offer these in card form as well. So here are your uh, calming strategies in a card form with a key ring. And again, these are great because they're portable and your students can take these to their desks. And the great thing about just having this there is it, it's low interruptions. You're not going to have a lot of problems. You know, your students, if this is at their desk or at the calm corner, they're going to be able to choose something to try and it's, you know, which will divert their attention. You know, if you're having a student with a meltdown, you need to de-escalate them and, and go on. But this can really go a long way as far as making sure your students are regulating their emotions before it becomes a full-blown meltdown. And it's really going to make them more comfortable because it's all about them. Really, it's not about how our classroom is run. It's about making sure their anxiety is okay so they can learn. And that's our goal. So remember at the beginning, we talked about how important it was that they try a calming strategy at their calm corner, but then return to your class. That's the important part. They can't stay there all day long. They have to go do their job and then come back. And so it's important to provide some kind of timer to go. These are really great. I can put an Amazon link on there. Um, I think they came in sets of three or four. I know at least three. This one is a five minute timer and there are there's a two minute and a three minute timer. And so at the beginning of the year, I always start out with a five minute timer while we're practicing, but then I might replace it with a two or three minute timer. I think you'll find too that you only need um, two, three minutes, especially once your students understand what the calm corner is for. Of course, these are meant for just keeping track of your students' time so they can return. They know they have a job to do and come back. But if you have a student that's stressed out about like time and they don't have time, if you're, you know, told a kid to relax like now, it's not going to work. And so if you need to give your student more time, of course, do that. Um, you know, if watching this goes down and I'm supposed to be relaxed by the time it goes down, don't make them use the timer. But for most kids, you can say, okay, you know, when the timer is down, when the sand is at the bottom, then you need to, you know, take another couple deep breaths and return to us. And so some kind of thing to um, keep track of time at your calm corner is really important. The next thing I want to add to your calm corner is a nice soft rug. I like these. Um, the kids can kind of play with these too, so they're textured. Um, I think I got this at Kohl's for Kohl's Cash too, so it was almost free. Um, but anyway, it's comfortable and it's soft and it's just something that helps them relax a little bit more. Um, you know, once I had a rug that had like an owl on it, they liked that too. It doesn't have to be a big one. In fact, this is like a bathroom size rug. And but the point is that it wants you want to have somewhere for them to go and just sit. And then also if you do have a smaller room and you don't have an area set aside, you can even do a portable thing where they just take the rug somewhere private and just spend a few minutes doing some calming strategies. And maybe they can take the ring with them. And so this is all you need. Um, but it's important to have a rug. Now you can have a chair or a wobble seat or something like that too, but I think that was more formal. My kids just kind of were sitting stiffly and so I think that this was a you know a much better thing because you know for me you know I'm an adult it kind of hurts sometimes to sit down and I can't get back up but for kids they just they like to sit on the rug it's fine it's comfortable so really use what have uh, what works well for your students but um, you know having some kind of comfort area is going to make them feel much more relaxed 
All right, now let's talk about a sensory tub. You want to have sensory items. They are important, but you want to use those as a tool in conjunction with your calming strategies. And so something that you can add is a stress ball. If they really are angry and they like to squeeze the heck out of a stress ball, then put a stress ball in there. Um, you know, if they like to hug stuffed animals, you know, add a stuffed animal to your calm corner to make sure that they have something to use. But your sensory items need to be aligned with a calming strategy. Otherwise, they're just kind of playing with the toys. Um, but you want to teach them both to use. This is the tool to help you feel better. And so if you're going to relax, you know, maybe you do have um, like a glitter tube, you know, where you tip it over and the glitter goes down and you're, you know, you just watch that and the timer goes and that helps you relax. And relax is one of your calming strategies. And so you can see how they're used in conjunction. But like having a pop it thing, if they don't want to use it, then don't put it in there. So whatever you put in your sensory tub is 100% up to you as what will help your students, but just make sure that you are using them as a tool to help them learn their strategy so they can feel better. If you would like any of the posters that we have or the cards, um, we also have coloring pages on our website, um, we, you know, which is great for students who like to relax by drawing. You can get those on my website. I'm putting the link below. And since teachers spend a lot of money on their own classroom, I am putting these at a discount. And you can enter the code CALM22 and you'll get 25% off your whole cart. So you can pick up all of these things for your calm corner so you're not having to make them from scratch because we all know you also are short on time. So make sure you go check those out there and enter the code to CALM22 at checkout and you can get your uh, calm corner all ready for your students. And the next video will be all about teaching your students how to use your calm corner. Your kiddos aren't going to walk into your classroom and know what to do the first time they visit and you really need to make sure that you set your expectations for it. And so that's the next video and so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time.